Hello everyone. Welcome to this lecture series on block OCI block volume service. Before we dive deeper into block volume and local NVMe storage, let's look at the gamut of storage services supported across uh, OCI platform. So starting with uh, on the left hand side, if you see in this uh, table, uh, we have local NVMe, uh, we have block volumes, file storage, object storage, and archive storage. So this is the, the whole gamut of storage um, services supported by the platform. Why do we have so many services? Well, these are tied to the use cases or the requirements customers have, and each of them have specific uh, use cases and specific characteristics. So let's uh, look into this really quickly. Uh, local NVMe is NVMe SSD based temporary storage. What this means is, sorry, let me get back to the slide. What it means is it's non-persistent uh, storage, but does survive reboots uh, because if you're running, let's say a database, you want to reboot the database. So it does support that. Uh, but the key point here is it's non-persistent uh, because it's temporary storage. Uh, the capacity can be in terabytes uh, and you can see some numbers here uh, for virtual machines or bare metal uh, instances. And the use cases uh, are um, applications which require uh, a lot of uh, throughput. So, um, you know, like big data applications, uh, uh, you know, OLTP, uh, where you require a massive amount of very fast storage, um, lots of IOPS, lots of throughput, very fast storage, local storage, you don't want to go onto the network, you would use uh, local NVMe. Block volume is also NVMe SSD based block storage. But in case of block volume, uh, the difference between local and block is block volume is durable. What does that mean? Durable means that, sorry, Durable means that we make multiple copies uh, of the volumes uh, in an AD. So even if one vo volume dies, we make three copies. So we guarantee that durability. The capacity can be in petabytes, much more than uh, the, capac the capacity is, uh, supported by uh, local NVMe. And uh, you can see some numbers right here. And, uh, and uh, the use case here uh, would be ap applications that require SAN-like like features. So whether it's Oracle database, um, if you're running VMware um, or Exchange or, or, or any of these other applications which really require SAN-like performance. The third uh, storage service uh, supported on OCI is the file storage. This is an NFS v3 compatible file system. Uh, again, it's a durable storage, multiple copies in an, in an uh, availability domain. Uh, the capacity is exabytes uh, and you can see some numbers here. And this is for uh, applications that require a shared file system. So for Oracle, it would be um, Oracle own applications like EBS, it can be HPC, it can be some other scenarios. And then the last two uh, storage services uh, are sort of, uh, you can think about those as uh, storage for the web, right? So if you have a lot of unstructured data, uh, you would store them in object storage, highly durable. We maintain multiple copies in the data centers, across the data centers in a multi-AD region, capacity, is uh, petabytes, uh, and you can see some of the some of the numbers here. Uh, and then, as I said, this is good for unstructured data. Uh, archive storage is a class within object storage, and it's suited for long-term archival and backup. Uh, again, highly durable, uh, and the use cases uh, for uh, applications that require uh, for for uh, applications that have a need for long-term archival and uh, backups. Okay, so let's move, move and talk a little bit uh, about uh, local NVMe storage. So in this section, we are going to cover local NVMe storage. And in the next uh, module, we are going to talk about uh, block volumes. So uh, what do we mean by local NVMe uh, storage? Uh, in, in OCI, in some instances, uh, have locally attached uh, NVMe uh, devices. And what this means is if you have applications that have very high storage performance requirements, uh, lots of throughput, lots of uh, IOPS, uh, local storage, you don't want to go through network, you would use these local NVMe uh, devices. As you can imagine, these are local, locally attached SSDs and they are not protected in any way uh, through RAID or snapshots or backup um, out of the box. So we don't guarantee any uh, protection out of the box, which means that you as customers are responsible for the durability of data on these uh, local SSDs. And you can see some instances here 
that support uh, local SSDs, right? Uh, BM bare metal dense IO shapes, support the virtual machine uh, uh, dense IO shapes, and you can see the sizes we support, right? Going from 51 terabytes uh, all the way come down to uh, something like 6.4 terabyte uh, for the smallest shape. So again, depending on your use case, you could either go with a bigger shape or a smaller shape. And if you go log into one of these um, SSH into one of these uh, instances and list all the block devices. So you say ls uh, blk list all the block devices you can see the 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 block uh, the nvme devices appear here right you can you can get a list so rather straightforward now one thing which is important and you need to consider is uh, these like we said these devices uh, devices are not protected by us out of the box so how do you go ahead and protect these devices right um, you can always configure raid uh, on these uh, nvme uh, local nvme devices so there are various options. I'm just presenting three of them here, but you can do something other than these three options as well. The simplest is RAID 1, which is basically just a copy or a mirror of set of data on two or more disks, right? So you have disk 0 and disk 1, and the same data is just copied uh, across these two different disks, right? Uh, the disadvantage here is there is no parity. Um, as you know, parity is a calculated value used to reconstruct data after a failure. So if, uh, uh, if you know, uh, if both the disks fail, uh, there, is, there, is, uh, there is no redundancy which is uh, built in. Uh, RAID 10 stripes data across multiple mirrored pairs. So if you can see here, uh, it's RAID 10 is, is a combination of, of sort of, you know, two different RAID 1 uh, pairs. As long as one disk in each mirrored pair is functional, data can still be retrieved. Um, right, so it, it provides uh, the, the extra uh, protection there. RAID 6 is block level striping with two parity blocks uh, distributed across all member disks. So, uh, disks. so it becomes a little bit more, uh, 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 it becomes a little bit more complex. So you take a performance hit, uh, but you get this extra durability. Uh, so again, depending on which RAID configuration you want to choose, you could go either with a RAID 1 um, uh, or, you know, RAID 10. Uh, or a RAID 6, um, but and you could try something else. But again, keep in mind that this is something which uh, which is completely the responsibility your responsibility as a as a customer. Though we don't configure RAID out of the box, we do uh, we do provide SLAs for uh, NVMe performance. Uh, and again, if you you can get this these numbers from our uh, documentation page. But you can see that going from uh, dense IO. Uh, 1.4, uh, 2.8, 2.16, and, and so on and so forth. You can see the, the, the IOPS value. We support the minimum IOPS value we support. So if you go with a bare, bare metal dense IO shape with 52 cores, we uh, support uh, 3 million uh, IOPS. And again, there are some uh, finer print you have to read. These are 4K block sizes, um, sort of the read write um, mix. Uh, for the workload etc right but there is an sla in case you are using local nvme uh, devices so with that thanks for watching this uh, module on local nvme devices in the next module we'll introduce block volume service and we'll look into some of the details thank you